everybody and welcome to another live stream here at Adobe Live in Behance. How are you doing today? I hope you're all doing really well. I also hope you've got your heating on because it's chilly in the UK at the moment. Um, I'm joined by Harriet and I'm, I can't even tell you how, how excited I am. Harriet, I'm so excited you're here. How are you doing? Oh, I'm yeah, I'm really excited to be here as well. Yeah, I'm doing good. Thank you. I'm very excited that you're here because um, when I logged in to our green room today, I saw Fresco open. So I was like, brilliant, okay, we're doing digital illustration. And then Harriet shared that her process involves multiple apps in the workflow. So what other apps are we gonna be in today, Harriet? Yeah, so I'm um, gonna start off in Fresco, do a little bit of sketching in there, plot mm -hmm. some colors, head into Illustrator to kind of create all the shapes and things, and then end up in Photoshop for all of the lovely sort of effects and things. I love it. This is the project that I'm here for. I'm really hosting <laughs> today. Um, and it's great to meet you as well. This is your first Adobe live stream. So it's really good to have you here. And um, our, I was mentioning in our green room earlier that our, our uh, community, everyone that joins us on Adobe Live, are, I feel like we've become really good friends actually over the last couple of years. And so you were really in good company. So um, I just want to say hello to everybody. And um, Kirsty was the first in this morning. So hey, Kirsty. And I can see Adiola as well, Sandrine, Kirsty, Jack and Oliver as well and Sean. So the whole crew have assembled for you today. So everybody's here. And um, yeah, if you have any questions for Harriet as we go, please pop them in the chat. Let me know. I'll make sure that I can get those asked um, to Harriet. And if you're watching on YouTube, all the chat and all of the fun is in Behance. So come over and, uh, and join us in Behance. So um, Harriet, we are doing some digital illustration. What's your project for today? Um, I've been excited for Christmas since August. Um, so I wanted to do something sort of festive, um, almost maybe like a Christmas card or just like a festive scene. Um, so I don't really know what it will turn into, but we'll, we'll kind of have a, a look. Um, so I'm going to create like a, yeah, like a very festive scene of, oh yeah, you can see the, this is what I've got here in Fresco, just a very messy sketch um, of what I'm going to create. I love it. And what gave you this idea for, I mean, I know that you're a big fan of Christmas, as am I. Mm -hmm. um, what gave you the idea for this exact illustration? Was it something you'd seen or just something that you wanted to put together in your mind? Um, I think I kind of, um, I was thinking of like what I could do is like a Christmas card for like family or friends. Um, and I always have this scene of like when you're with family, you're all around a Christmas tree sort of, you know, decorating it with the baubles. But then I thought it might be fun to do. Um, I always like to do something a little bit kind of comical or just a bit out of the ordinary. So this is supposed to be you can't really see it yet. I've, sorry, you will see. Um, it's supposed to be like an outdoor scene of people walking through like a forest and decorating the trees outside. So, yeah. <laughs> oh, and Sandrine in the chat says mince pies, icing sugar, chocolate. I'm in. <laughs> I'm totally here for this as well. I'm the biggest Christmas fan. And I have to, I have to, I'm not allowed to put any decorations up until my husband and my daughter have their birthdays. Which oh, I know. <laughs> So I really want them. Have you got your anything up? I can't see anything in your background. No, this is this is a very messy office right now. I'm trying to like lean so you don't see all the <laughs> mess. Um, everything's in my front room. This is just like the office exercise bike mishmash room. Love it. So you've got decorations <laughs> up already? Not yet, but we've um, I've got the box out. <laughs> Love it. It's ready. <laughs> Love it. Love it. Cool. So we are in Frisco. And, and Harriet, for anybody that, because we, your first Adobe live stream, please tell us a little bit about you as well and just like your experience, the type of work that you work on, um, mm. you know, what your favorite projects, all that kind of thing. Yeah, please let us know more about you. Yeah. Um, well, I, um, I guess what you describe as like a paper or paper like artist. I started um, actually in lockdown because I had a lot of time on my hands creating sort of um illustrations with paper just layering up like actually cutting out paper with a blade and sticking and just creating scenes for fun um and then I start picking up work for um through my agency studio pie um like magazines and things so the work started pacing um and I found that paper is quite hard to get finished for a, a deadline 
So I started to do things sort of digitally and start to look for ways to kind of mimic that like real kind of tangible, organic, sort of messy feeling that you kind of get with paper. Um, So, yeah, I love doing scenes that sort of like recently I've done something for like women's health with the Lady Garden Foundation, which I really love, like sort of um, kind of sciencey but social relationships. Um, And just, yeah, I would describe my work as like yeah bit of humor bit of um kind of comical sort of elements to it um yeah love it love it <laughs> and um do you have where's the best place to point people to to have a look at some of your work is it your instagram do you have a, a behance portfolio how do we have a look? probably my instagram i need to update everything that's not instagram at the moment <laughs> that's my task for this week um but yeah my instagram is just harriet noble and then art um okay. that's what you'll okay. see Can yeah pop it in the chat for us um yeah. fabulous fab okay cool so this um i see what you're doing here with this sketch this is cool this is a good place to start yeah so, so yeah um i'm what i normally do is i start with like a really messy sketch like this um just to kind of work out where everything's going to go on the page um and then I basically add another layer on top which I think I've done already and select a bit more of like a finer pencil just to kind of trace over it and refine it a little bit more um so I will go and select one of those now it's going to dry me what did you find was like the hardest thing of moving from working with paper to moving digitally was there like you know a, a few things to get your head around in that process or was it quite easy um yeah I think just you often make mistakes when you're working with paper um and like there's like rips and things where things haven't gone right but I think that's what like adds to like the just the, the kind of the beauty of it that it looks so like handmade um and that's what I found like quite tough at first, like getting into um, digital because everything looks so perfect and so clean and mm. it's it's great in some ways. But sometimes you have to kind of like fight against it to kind of make it look a little bit more. Yeah, like handmade. So that was probably the biggest challenge at first. Um, and I'm probably only recently kind of got to a place where I'm happy with it. Um, mm. It's like a constant process, really. Yeah, definitely. I think it's um, there's a lot of trial and error, isn't there? Yeah. As you're, as you're exploring some new things. And um, Sean has asked in the chat, Maddie, please pronounce baubles for me. I've been told I need to learn it. Sean, how are you pronouncing baubles wrong? What did, Would you say baubles, Harriet? Or would you? I haven't really thought about it before. Um, <laughs> <laughs> it's not really sorry. something that... Um, yeah. bull, baubles? 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 I'm really like analyzing how you say it. you know when you yeah. say a word multiple times and you think it sounds strange now yes I get that uh, yeah Sean please pop in the chat how you have been pronouncing baubles is it baubles that how you're doing it I see the other way I can see brilliant <laughs> Goodness. so uh, what's your favorite thing about the Christmas holiday though as you love Christmas mm, probably all the board games um yes I kind of sort of bully my family into playing board games with me I'll like arrive at my mum and dad's house with like a big tote bag of all the games and things and like I I love the food that has to come like second but I'm pretty much sitting through dinner sort of waiting yeah you and I are so similar Harriet this is unreal (laughs) after this we need to go through a list uh, a comprehensive list of good games and ranking the games because I'm exactly the same as you yeah I am so up for that (laughs) (laughs) Sean said yes Maddie that is how I said it but because um Sean is adding extra punctuation to that sentence I I can tell he's not happy about it (laughs) (laughs) even Stuart's written someone say bow bowels hi everyone hey Stuart there's a debate about how to pronounce baubles <laughs> hot topic <laughs> I know <laughs> oh I love it I love it yes to board games at Christmas absolutely mm. and um yeah it's uh 
it's so good, isn't it? I, we did, um, I did a stream last year on Christmas pajamas and how to design something to go on the uh, yeah, Christmas pajamas. So there's definitely time to put one of those in this year. I think we need to. Yeah, yeah I love that. Get you involved, Harriet, for sure. Oh, yeah, for sure. Anything like Christmas related, I'm always, <laughs> always up for. Yeah. It's just over too quickly. Otherwise, like you've got to, yeah. you've got to start planning, celebrating in like the whole month to um up to it. Oh yeah, <laughs> completely agree. And do you play Whamageddon? No, I haven't heard of that. What is that? So Sandrine in the chat taught me about Whamageddon. Thank you, Sandrine, because I had I don't know if this is the thing to say that I had Whamageddon her. <laughs> um, so uh, it's a game that people play you can google it uh, it's a game that people play where they try to avoid listening to the song last christmas by wham and i think it's quite a risky game when you're listening to the radio in the car or the ra you know, radio in any, you know any any place um and when you hear it you it's from again the game's over game stops so you've got to see how far uh you know towards christmas <laughs> and oh song. i love that that must be really hard <laughs> so Andrew's writing in capitals no Sandrine, please get stop it. She's like, <laughs> well, um, <laughs> you're gonna have to give more details. Have I explained it more? Please put more information in the chat. So, but this is a game, see, Harriet. This is why I, I jumped on top of this because I was like, oh, game, something else. Yeah. Challenge myself. Brilliant. You'd have to be really careful when you go through like a shopping center or a department <laughs> store or something. Just like putting the, the earplugs or. <laughs> Edge, shop online <laughs> <laughs> that's really that's like taking the stakes really seriously isn't it right oh now. yeah like <laughs> I, I take yeah. every game seriously <gasps> same yeah <laughs> although I gotta be honest though if if I lose a lot which has never happened by the way but if I feel like I'm on a losing streak then I do think how do I sabotage this uh this game <laughs> like monopoly the worst, the worst oh yeah and it could sometimes you have to sabotage with monopoly though because then it can go on for hours oh, and by I the know. end you just everyone's just sat there like oh my god please stop <laughs> <laughs> i see jane's writing uh, my husband saw the first christmas tree up in someone's house this week good for them oh good i love them. that Sandrine has said, I've scheduled a post on LinkedIn just for you. <laughs> <laughs> so good. Hey, um, Harriet, we have somebody called Taya in the chat. He says, I've been a fan of your work for a few years and your style has been, um, I've seen some changes. How might you envisage your style changing in the future? Taya, good question. Oh, that is a good question. Um, I think oh, it's hard to say because I think that's the thing with like anyone who's creative is you just don't know the path ahead really you just kind of come across mm. like happy accidents and when you look back the path seems so obvious like oh of course I was always going to get here like this inspiration and this inspiration mm. led to this um so I, I do think in some ways I know I want to do more like scenery and things which is kind of what inspired this piece so I think Nice. I used to do a lot of life drawing to kind of learn to draw. I'm naturally yeah. drawn to drawing people because mm. um, it's my comfort zone. So that's I want hot. to. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's great that that's your comfort zone. I think, yeah, we did a stream uh, with David covering uh, faces and people and different expressions. And it's definitely quite tricky. Um, yeah. So great that that's your comfort zone, you know? Yeah. I think, um, yeah, just. When it's it's just whatever you're used to drawing, I guess. Um, if you do that a lot, that's 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 your comfort zone. Um, but yeah, I think I find it easier to kind of exaggerate things and make things like bendier and yeah. with like objects and um, environments. You, it's it can be a lot harder to kind of make. You know, if you've got like a a rigid object like a table, you can't. I mean, maybe you can. Maybe you can make a wavy table or. <laughs> Yeah, um, yeah, but you yeah. know what I mean. Like it it's a lot harder. Fun. Yeah, yeah. Have you ever thought about doing children's books and illustration for, for children's books? Oh yeah, I'd love, I'd love to do a, a children's book. I can book. see you doing that with your style. I really can. Yeah, really I, it's the playful side, you know. Yeah, I did. Um, 
uh, I studied animation in uni and a lot of that was like storytelling and um, I've always like had that kind of interest but you know you know when you just have so many like projects and ideas that you'd love to do and there's like um hard to find the time um but yeah that's definitely on the list of future yeah kind of projects I can definitely see so your process here then is that you've kind of made a sketch in fresco you're going mm -hmm. through this so you're adding you know, more of a darker contrast like darker lines mm -hmm. and then this is so how often would you do the whole page like this before you bring it into illustrator or would you just do like the main characters yeah i think um i definitely place more importance on the main characters because they need to look a certain way whereas what larger shapes i can i find it easier to refine later mm -hmm. um i can kind of show you what what it would look like next so if i remove this sketch you can kind of see this is actually messier than i would normally do but kind of talking at the same time you can kind of see mm. it's starting to gain a little bit of neatness but then the next step would be to let's just hide this layer bring this one back it's a little bit yeah, cool. um yeah just kind of refine sort of shape it almost looks like a coloring book at this point um I love it I love the them holding the star the putting the star on the tree with the um yeah the and someone climbing a, a tree in the back yeah, so you can kind of see it's like that's the scene now before I think it's probably quite hard to tell. But yeah, it's like people cli climbing trees and there's like little a little mountain in the back and things like that. And it's sort of what I love about some paper illustrations is it looks like you're looking through like a little tunnel, like a little window. And that's mm. what I'm going to hope to do with this illustration. I'm going to have all the these kind of bigger shapes around the edge and then with all these kind of almost like a tunnel and it's going to be a little bit darker and then you're going to peer through and see all these kind of characters in the middle just love it. La, da, 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 da. Um, love it. and yeah. how long would you normally spend on the process when you're involving three different apps and you're you know starting and then moving how long mm, it depends I think if it's a personal project it could be forever <laughs> because <Right. laughs> right. um yeah because yeah you, you, it's hard to um sort of stop in a way <laughs> Um, but if it's like a client project, I probably spend um, maybe a, an hour or so on the sketch. Um, and then probably the longest point, which I'm going to go into next, um, is Illustrator, because that's where you're kind of mapping out all of the shapes and working out the colors and things. Um, and Photoshop is actually probably the quickest because there's so many like cool shortcuts and things yeah. um, once, once you kind of get the look that you're looking for. Mm. um so yeah maybe about maybe about if I worked solidly like a, probably a, a day all together mm. um yeah yeah good amount of work isn't it but the outcome like as you say we're looking through the window at that scene in the middle I can see exactly what you're what you're doing yeah, yeah. um so one of the last steps I would do um just before moving into illustrator I want to know what colors I'm using first so I would just very quickly, like maybe grab a larger brush, like um, nothing fancy. I really love the dry media ones, but I'm just going to go in mm. with maybe just even like a soft chalk or something. Mm -hmm. Or yeah, let's go for a soft chalk. And then I would, I've kind of created a, a color palette already, but I would then, based on some colors that maybe I found off, I, I don't know, looking around just, I, I don't know where I get my inspiration from but just random bits and bobs in the world yeah. um and I would just do a really rough um kind of painting yeah like this and have you ever used um Adobe Capture to capture swatches of colors from things that you see like oh my gosh yes I forgot about Adobe Capture I absolutely love Adobe Capture um yeah especially for like um where I've like been at a sunset and you get all sorts of colors and that's just such a good way to use it I've never yeah, used sunset. point your I mean not my iPad I'm not one of those people but with my phone <laughs> just take a photo <laughs> um yeah it's yeah. just really good for just anything you see very quickly on the go even if you don't know what kind of project you're using for it late you know it's mm. nice to just store and 
have it for another moment. Mm. Yeah, I agree with that. I, it doesn't, um, I always go brighter the better, but I, yeah, I need reining in. So that helps me with the, <laughs> you know. And David, yeah. capture is superb for generating color schemes. Yes, David. Yeah. Um, just joined us as well. Hello. Oh. So yeah, what I'm thinking with this piece is probably have like lots of blues around the outside. Mm -hmm. And then um, I'm going to have like lots of pinks and warmer colors, like kind of opposite colors, just so it kind of stands out yeah. and you're kind of drawn into the middle a little bit more. Um, so probably some lighter blue, like the snow. Um, and I just, yeah, like being able to sort of take a snapshot of, of colors like that with Adobe Capture, like helps me learn about color as well. Like when yeah. I first started illustrating, I think snow, white, but then, you know, it's not until you like look at photos where like there's shadow on the snow and it's actually like a nice, like baby blue. Um, and you think, oh, okay. Maybe yeah. I can use that in the future. So it's like taught me quite a lot how and colour works. Mm. I'm always surprised when I see people doing life drawings of, of faces and I see lots of blue being used um, on faces to show the shading. And I would never think, I would always think, oh, you know, beige, peach, yeah. or brown, or, you know, um, but blue. But then it has such a good effect when you look at the, you know, the, the shading, you just think, oh, this makes sense. Yeah, yeah. I, it's fascinating. Like you could just kind of get lost in, in that in a way. Mm. Um, so yeah, this this is kind of what I would do. I'm not going to spend too much time on that because um, I'll jump into Illustrator. But once I've done all of that, I'll use I'll export both of these as just um, separate images. So I'll hide this and I just go to share and then just quick export it because it doesn't need to be anything fancy and then just save it to my photo library. Um, and then I would jump into Illustrator on the iPad because I love it with the pencil. I find it's like quite nice for drawing those flowy shapes. Mm. Um, and I would bring it in just by going to photos. And there we go. And then I would also bring in, let me just lock that. Um, so I'm just going to go to the layers and just make it a multiply layer so I can see through it and just make it a little bit fainter. And then just bring in my color plan. Here it is. So this is, again, one I made earlier, but it's you can see like it doesn't look like much at the moment, but it's going to show me like where my colors are going to go. I can just kind of pop ah. that. Cool. to the side there and just kind of use that as like a reference as I'm drawing. Mm. And um, what, um, what's that kind of extra benefit that you feel um, using Illustrator to do this rather than just going straight from fresco to Photoshop? Um, I think it, for the kind of the shapes that I do, I, I like them to be really kind of flowy and quite clean in a way. Um, mm. And um, a lot of the time, the work I'm doing, perhaps I don't know how large it's going to be as well. So especially for like client work, um, things can change really quickly, like where they want to go. Um, so at least in like the middle stage, the bit that takes the longest, I have a bit of versatility about the size that I want it to to be. Um, mm. And that's what I like about the kind of vector element of it. It's very kind of versatile. Mm. Um, yeah, I don't know. I think it... it I, yeah, I just, I think that's the main thing. Um, I'm just sort of drawn to it in a way. Um, and yeah, just like how it allows me to kind of edit it as I go along. So I'm actually going to go into one that's a little bit more kind of finished so you can see, just looks a little bit better. Oh, wow. So there we go. And I, I'm someone who adds millions and millions of layers and some people probably screaming at this like so unorganized <laughs> <laughs> do you name your layers i could see they're just as layer, layer one. No. No. do you know what no, not every, if you know what it is then hey, yeah it counts, right? 
Yeah, I think if it was very fiddly and I couldn't see immediately what it was or, um, yeah, or when I take it into Photoshop, that's when I start to kind of name layers and things because um, that's when I'll start to kind of organise things a bit more. At the moment, I'm just literally just kind of plotting shapes down. I love that they've got like little heads, but then their hands holding the Christmas things are large and, you yeah. know, like it really puts the, you know, you can see that the baubles and the, the star and, oh, I love it. Yeah. Um, yeah, I don't know why I draw big hands. Um, <laughs> just like big hands. <laughs> I think people do a lot of expressing with their hands. I think that's it. Cause yeah. my, my faces are quite simple. They're literally like, um, almost like clown faces so I feel like to kind of offset that maybe I don't know I'm maybe I'm just drawing bigger hands um so if I'm going to add a new layer down here <laughs> David in the chat says someone else soon neglects the name their layers I'm not alone <laughs> <laughs> and um and Liz has asked what's the biggest thing that your work has been on Harriet um biggest as in physically big um let's say that and maybe the biggest project you've worked on perhaps oh double parter oh okay um probably physically big was I did um some work for like a, a billboard in um uh, for billboards in Manchester for the Lady Garden Foundation so they were huge um and that's wow. where this became like especially useful and it was like of like women sort of checking themselves downstairs and they had like their legs in the air like the knickers and it was like oh, quite yeah. a big statement piece yeah. um so the, yeah that that was really cool um and that was probably the most physically largest piece but then um probably the biggest piece I've done recently, I guess the proudest piece I've done recently um, was probably for AOI, the Association of Illustrators, um, kind of helped do all their illustrations for their rebrand. And um, yeah, that that was cool. That was quite a few kind of illustrations for that. Um, yeah. Love it. Hmm. Love it. I love how this is coming together. And your characters are playful. Um, you can see the, yeah. Yeah. And um, this bit I'm doing where um, you can see I've just, this is another thing I like about Illustrator on here is I've kind of really roughly just done this sort of snow over this bush here. Um, and I haven't really followed the edge too much because I can always just um, grab both of those and then using the like the combined shape menu and go to shape builder, I can literally just drag my pencil and then just trim off the edge a bit here, which I wish like existed in real life. Like you could just boop. <laughs> um. <laughs> yes. The amount of things that I yeah, I completely agree with you. Yeah. Oh. Um so and I kind of I don't know if this is the right way to do it, but I also use it to sort of trim the edges. I don't know if this is like a necessary thing to do but I just do that and then just use that to trim the edge off there. Maybe there's a quicker way, but that's how I like to do it. Right. That's good to me. That's good to me. So yes, so you've got um, lots of layers. Do you find that you kind of bake these down? Uh, you know, do you group them before you finish a project or would you just leave your layers panel like that? You yeah, can... definitely. Um, I think, I tend to group them in Photoshop because sometimes when I um, copy and paste it into Photoshop, I just kind of like to, I don't know, I just like to do all my organization there because that's where I'm kind of working out how I'm going to add all of the effects and it's starting to get to a more kind of finished point. Um, yeah, that's a good plan because I think if you group layers in Fresco uh, while you're drawing, then you go to erase something and you can't erase on a group layer. So then you've got to ungroup everything. Mm, yeah, that's what I and found. Then behind the layer. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Scrolling away. Right. Um, yeah, so I kind of find it's better to be a little bit more kind of open 
and not do too much organization at the beginning and then you just kind of like refine and refine as you go along good tip and you mentioned earlier your agency so there's a lot of the work that you're booked for come through your agency or do you get contacted mostly on instagram or linkedin um i think yeah most of it through my agency i've got contacted through my instagram as well um linkedin is um actually yeah maybe like a fair split between linkedin and instagram um and just people emailing me as well um but yeah i would say the majority through um my agency which is yeah very helpful that's cool and stuart's got a really good question stuart you definitely win the award of the best question on the stream so far which is have you thought about moving your art into a virtual world oh my gosh all of the time I think about this all of the time. Um, I really, one of the next things, what I might actually end up doing with this piece as well, once I'm finished with it, mm. is I'd love to do like, um, make, make, I'm, I guess this is virtual, but having like a an AR sort of 3D layered um, version of this. So like, you know, you could pick up, I don't know, maybe I could send someone a card and then they could like look at it through like their phone and you could see it like all kind oh. of, I'm out. Um, I love that. Yeah, I love. I, that's one of my next sort of things to do. Um, yeah, and I think it kind of works for the paper sort of layout way of things of doing. Um, and Sandrine has a question for you, um, which is: When you build an illustration, do you have a go-to method on a compositional aspect? So her example is that Sandrine works in layers that stack over. Uh, on top of each other one for background one for main objects um yeah so do you yeah do you have a method is it all layers different layer for different things or oh as in like separate um separate things into like yeah like background foreground um I, I guess it depends on the the illustration and um how many elements there are into it like I think for this when I get into um, Photoshop, I'd probably group all the big blue bush bushes um, around the edge as like one kind of group for my foreground and then have all my layers below that. And then have probably all the, um, yeah, like the red sort of trees and mountains and bushes as like a separate and then like a, um, a separate group and then have the background as a separate group. Yeah, I think, yeah, yeah. that definitely helps with the chaos <laughs> <laughs> yeah well Stuart says you know if you layer it in Photoshop you could move it into Aero so Adobe Aero and you would be able to get this virtual reality experience um, yeah using these very good if you do this please tag us in it or do something so that we can see this because I'm going to follow you on Instagram um and LinkedIn now but yeah uh, I definitely want to see that would be amazing yeah I am that's that's the plan I think you're reading my mind <laughs> um <laughs> Yeah, Aero, I've I've kind of played around with before, but I've never sort of had the right um, project to really kind of play around with it. But um, I think something like this, yeah, definitely, definitely want to play around with it. Joe's just joined us now from Japan and says this looks super cool. Joe, it is cool. Harry oh, is cool. so cool. We're just saying we love her playfulness on the on the characters that you're drawing. It's just so good. So good. Yeah, I think um I don't know where why they're all kind of bendy and things, but when I kind of think back and like I don't know, my studies and when I did animation, I was looking at like um like vintage Disney animation, you know how they're all very spaghetti arms or like Popeye yeah. all the like 1920s 30s sort of Betty Boop sort of style um yeah I feel like that's probably played a part at some point I love it Sandrine says do you know what Sandrine I completely agree Sandrine says that she can see your illustration inside a snow globe in aero with animated snow and everything Sandrine I nearly said about animated snow I, you beat me to it. I was honestly, it was the tip of my tongue. This could be exactly that. I you can that. do animated snow. I didn't know you could do that. In fresco. Yeah. You could even draw the path of where you want that snow to fall. Yeah. Ah, oh, yeah. I'm definitely going to have to do that. That sounds very good. I'm loving this. 
this is so good. Do you know what? Oh my gosh, I just looked at the time. It, it's like 12.35. We've been oh, 35 cool. minutes already. It's flown by. That has flown by. Oh my goodness. Well, um, everybody, we're, we're over halfway through the stream. If you're watching on YouTube, come over to Behance, pop your question in because we've had some really good questions so far for Harriet. And if you want to ask anything, pop it in the chat on Behance and I'll make sure it gets asked. Cool. Um, but yeah, this is essentially what I would do for all of the bits and bobs. Um, one extra thing that I like to do as well is so I don't make it look too perfect and it looks like someone's just placed a layer of paper over um another layer i kind of move it off a little bit so you can see ah. where it just doesn't quite line up um which isn't neat but i like the sort of randomness of it well, i was going to ask when you said about paper at the start of this do you put a shadow effect or like a glow behind it so that you can see the layers or is it more just that they're displaced to look like bits of paper um, yeah, so I definitely add a shadow and things, um, which I'll actually probably start doing in Photoshop now on my Mac. Um, yeah. So you can export this out as a photo Photoshop file if you want to, but I tend to just copy and paste all of the layers straight into Photoshop. So if I bring up my Mac on here, um, there we go. And I think from Illustrator, you can jump actually straight into Photoshop without copying and pasting and the layers. I think it just goes, I think it's just as simple as going share with Adobe Photoshop. Oh, yeah, yeah. I've exported it out as a, um, a PSD before. But oh. I think sometimes the way um, the cop, I, I think the way it copies the layers for me. Uh. The way I, know what you mean. I probably am doing all the layers wrong in Illustrator, so um, there's no wrong. <laughs> <laughs> it works for me. Yeah. So the way it works for me the best is if I literally just. I, I mean, I think this is so clever that you can do this. Like, I just um, literally just go Command V, and then it gives me these little paste options, and I just say paste as layers, and then I have all my layers on the left here because it's a very long list, and then. It has all of them here, which is just like magical. Um, I still get impressed by that all the time. It's probably something really small, but I love that. Um, and Rachel says she loves your work. Hey, Rachel Presky. Just oh, joined. Thank you. Um, yeah, so you can see this is like the finished sort of like what I would do in Illustrator. Um, I'm then going to go over to this one. So you can just see a little bit more of like the effects Mm. and things I would add to it oh cool so half of this is done and half of this isn't um but at this point in photoshop this is where if I zoom in it's quite a large file so I hope my computer is going to be okay but you can see here with if you can see my mouse I've started to add like paper textures I've had a bit of a drop shadow yeah. um but I've also if I zoom in really far this is a bit no one ever looks at but Ooh it makes me happy is all these like little crispy edges that you get which I think just adds to that um and the texture that you've got on that pink paper love that mm, yeah that then in photoshop yes yeah. um, these are kind of like watercolor texture papers that I've kind of picked up over over the years um and I'll kind of go into how I sort of do all of these effects now so I'm going to start off with this star um, just by clicking on it and then you can see on my layers now mm. that I have I have I forgot I did this I have um, named some of the layers like red bush bush in front of person <laughs> I don't know how helpful they are but no yeah. I mean it's your process right this is the thing and I think that on Adobe Live everyone has their different way of doing it and it works for them and it's amazing so yeah. just don't change <laughs> it's amazing so um, oh, cool. Good. That's good to know. And um, what I'm going to do is, where's my, just find my star in this list. It should highlight it. There we go. And I'm just going to, I might just pop my layers back in here. There we go. Um, where is it? 
there we go okay um and then i'm going to go down to this little button here which is where all the magic happens um which is all my effects options um blending options i'm going to bring that up and then just have that on the side here and then the first thing I start off with, there's quite a few options that I add, um, but it's bevel and emboss. And what this does is it allows me to kind of make the paper look like it's kind of, when you cut paper, it kind of curls up a bit and you get a bit of a shadow where it's mm -hmm. kind of the light's not catching it. Um, so I add it in a bevel and make it smooth. I've actually got all these settings set up already, um, but you can see this little helpful box. Mm. Um, which kind of allows me to see what I'm doing both here and there. And um, if I kind of mess around with this, you can kind of see that it's adding a slight bit of shadow to it, but the depth sort of, um, it does what it says, it sort of just softens this look for me. Um, so I'll have it on like there and the size sort of shows like how much it's going to kind of creep into the the edges of that. I'm going to bring it to about here. And then below this is kind of the shading that it creates. And um, you can kind of drag this little dot around and it's sort of, oh. I don't know how easy this, I might just turn up the shadow so you can see it. Oh, this is, oh yeah. cool. Um, but there's, I don't think any like science to this. I just sort of wiggle this around until it looks good. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. Well, and this, this, do you know what? This will answer, I think, Sandrine's question that she just asked, which is, um, have you got your own Photoshop styles set up in advance or do you just do them differently every time? Um, again, this is probably something I should do, but um, no, I don't. And I think in a way it's, I like to keep every drawing I do sort of, separate in a way so don't use the same exact style because again different shapes react to like light and shadow in, in a different way so how I do the star will be very different to how I do these bigger shapes um yes. so it, do, it does save time if you're doing a lot of the same shape over and over again yeah. um but um no <laughs> is the answer um, so yeah, I wiggle that thing around and that sort of changes the kind of how the light is affecting it. Um, I'm just going to make it a little bit more. And um, I've got to ask, Harriet, do you, are your layers panel, do you, sorry, let's start again, is your layers panel normally on the left for you? Because normally it's on the right, do you always work with it on the left or you just moved it over for us on this stream? Um, I, it depends how many layers I have. If I want to really to see them all as long as uh, I like to I take see. them out. Um, and that's especially useful when I'm just like naming and organizing. I can kind of, or trying to find something. If I've lost, I always like tend to lose where I put an object or something. So it's me, me basically hunting for something I've lost. Totally makes sense. Yeah, Sandrine agrees. It makes sense. Yeah, yeah. That's cool. cool. I had to ask because it's just, it, yeah, it's different. So it's good to see, good to know why. Nice. Um, I'm just going to zoom in here so I can see a little bit better. And this is where I'm going to start to add the sort of the edges, um, the kind of the crispy edges that you see on the paper behind. Um, so I'm going to go to inner shadow for that. Um, and you might not be able to see on this shape because it's quite a white shape, but um, I use inner shadow to add like a white line to the edges of, you can kind of see it in the shape here. Um, so I make the blend mode for this normal and just change the color to white and I make these um, sliders down here really small around one because if I drag it up I don't know if you'll be able to see um, it basically just takes away the nice clean line so like it and yeah. then I move on to inner glow which adds the um, like the darker line which is like how it looks like the paper's been kind of cut and I select linear burn for this and um, just kind of if I bring this up you can see like how dark the line gets mm -hmm. um, so I don't want it to be that dark because I just want it to be slightly lighter than the color of the paper and then I make the color of it just a, like a, a darker version of this color mm -hmm. I'd probably go for like something like that 
So Jean completely agrees and says um, that she doesn't like the layer panel to be docked. So she likes it to be out so that she can see all of the layers. Mm. I yeah, I think it's nice to customize it to whatever you're doing. Um, so yeah, sometimes I'll have it floating and yeah, sometimes I'll have it there depending on what I'm doing. Um, and then this thing here, this is what I tend to change is this kind of the size of it. So this is just kind of, again, bring affects how much it goes sort of into the center, like the size of it. So I'll have that down to about five maybe. Again, so subtle, but I feel like overall it can mm. make a difference. Yeah. And then um, I kind of make my way down the list. This is like how I add textures. You don't have to do this. Some people like add a layer, a layer um, in the layers panel as like a texture. And yeah. um, but I like to do this a pattern overlay. And then I set my pattern to be again a, a linear burn, or you could do multiply to kind of darken the color. And then um, you've got yeah. different patterns on the different pieces that are around. So do you make sure that if you're adding a pattern to that layer, that it's not the same pattern as the layer underneath? Yeah, or, sure. Yeah. Yeah. Um, again, like it maybe some people wouldn't notice, but if I'm using the same texture as the color, I'm pointing at my screen as if you can see. <laughs> um, <laughs> <laughs> but if you have the same texture as here, then it just it looks again a bit too artificial so you want to sort of mimic you know using different paper so I could select a different um kind of watercolor paper so that one's kind of cool that's cool um and then you can kind of like resize it to you know, give it a bit of sort of dirt and then you can also like change the angle that that texture is oh my computer is there we go yeah you can kind of change the angle that that textures being applied um, and then finally I start to go to drop shadow so I use drop shadow in two different ways I use it to add again another you can kind of see it here where I've just added it I take it away it's added like another little white line to the edge so um, yeah I actually turn it to screen and add a white color and make sure the angle is pointing um kind of upwards so again i just wiggle this until it looks good and then make sure this is really tiny again like one here and one here so it's a nice clean line and then finally i get a drop shadow um okay. yeah uh, yeah it looks perfectly like a piece of paper that's yeah. layered on top of that it's exactly yeah yeah really good um and I think drop shadow is just like, it's, it's so good for this. Cause I could just literally change like how far I want that paper mm -hmm. to be away. And I quite like the idea of the, the star kind of being sort of sticking out. So being really prominent um, in this picture. So I can change the distance and then make it a little bit more blurry just as it gets further away from the paper behind it. And then um, also, another thing I've done recently is I used to make all my shadows just black, um, which made everything look a bit grey. And now I make my shadows just whatever colour this paper is, but just darker. So down to about oh, I see. here. And then it just has a bit of a more um, realistic sort of shadow to it and doesn't look as grey. That's a good idea. And then, yeah, that's once I've done that, um, that seems like a really long process. But the great thing about that is I can just right click on those effects there and just copy the layer style and then go over to something else. Like, I don't know, let's do one of these bits here. Right click on it and paste. And... I mean, that's the, 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 yeah. And it's so quick. It's just, and I could just do that to all of them and just, I need to like customize that a bit more, but I could go in and just click on the drop shadow and change the depth of it. And it just saves so much time. So much time. So speaking of your process then, what's it like when you're working with people? 
So what's it like when, uh, you know, like how many review rounds do you normally have? And, um, you know, how much would you present early on to this finished result? Like, do you expect a lot of iterations? Do you, like, talk us through your process of how you work with, hmm. with people. Yeah, that's a good question. Um, so I start off with like what I normally show someone is um, that rough sort of sketch that we saw at the beginning, the pencil one. Uh, where it's a little bit more refined not the first one that would be awful and um i show them that rough color splodge picture that i do as well to kind of show how the colors are going to work together um, and it should give them like a, a rough idea of how the final thing is going to look um and that's it that's all i would do for the first sort of like round and then after that it depends on the project if it's something that has to be turned around really quickly if they're happy with the sketch and the colors and you know there's no changes i would then just take it to this where i've like added in everything um and then maybe there's some like final tweaks and there's just like a lot of trust with that they just have to kind of trust you <laughs> that you're going to do a good job um and if it's a little bit longer then maybe like you've got weeks to work through something maybe i just might show them the in-between stage so the bit before um like this this so without all the shadows and things so they can kind of see yeah. a bit more of a refined but so all together i wouldn't do any more than one or two rounds before i showcase yeah. like the the finished thing because otherwise you could be working on something forever and it takes yeah. up all your time and it's yeah. um yeah it's the fine line between working on a project speed you know at speed getting it done or having time because both have got their their bad side right <laughs> with one being no time and the other being too many changes so yeah yeah exactly it's yeah i've learned that it's really important to strike up a balance so you don't mm. live in your computer um yes yeah um, yeah so i think yeah i think it's important to sort of set that um i guess not rule but like agree on that before you kind of get into um a yeah. bit of work have you ever had that fear of the blank page about getting started has that ever got to you where you just just like oh i don't know where to begin all the time it's um yeah. it's like having a moment of sort of insecurity like oh i'm not going to be good enough this drawing is not going to work and i don't know where to start and what do you do to get around it any tips for anyone listening on, on the stream today I would say just um just power through it just do it I know that's probably really terrible advice but every time I've just gone like Harriet just pull yourself together just just do it um rather than just or maybe like taking a walk as well like getting a bit of fresh air and then yeah. going straight into it I think sometimes just separating yourself having a make some food do something nice um yeah so it's it's either or it's either just just do it or um just like yeah. have a moment to sort of separate yourself yeah I agree I can then click on this little warping sort of tool here and it gives me this little grid which I can then just like drag Ooh, it's not what quite what I wanted but what that does is makes the paper look like it's kind of curving up so the shadows kind of oh yeah warp a little bit let me go into something a bit smaller oh. so it's just again not perfect like that yeah, I like that. Yeah, because it's it looks like it's but you mentioned earlier like the natural um paper just folding at the edge. Mm. Yeah, exactly. Um so again, I don't do that for every little thing, but especially things where they're like thin shapes or like 
you see like this long arm um i might do it for there just to make it look like it's kind of bending out a little bit um and yeah and then just kind of varying the depth the shadows of all the little bits so like some bits are much further away so the shadows are much larger and blurrier but then some bits are kind of stuck straight on top of something so the shadows are going to be a lot cleaner um so yeah that's that's kind of essentially it and it's it's amazing that I can just like copy and paste copy and paste and then just edit it for what I want and then I wonder if I can get into like what it would eventually look like this is so good, Harriet. And on your Instagram, there are pictures of uh, characters, you know, in your style that you've made that look like they've been made out of plasticine, like 3D that you've made. Did you do that, those effects in Photoshop and, and get into 3D and there or through Dimension or? Um, yeah. I, I probably don't know enough about Photoshop to do that. Um, I, I did them in um, Blender because um, essentially all of this, sort of style I like it to look quite childlike and quite playful um so I really liked the idea of like translating that to like a plasticine look as if someone had molded it mm. so um yeah I did that in in blender as well and then I actually brought that into photoshop just to kind of play around with the colors a bit more and kind of used it to edit it like a normal photo um lots of cool effects I'm loving it yeah. well um yeah, Stuart does have a really good question for you, which is, and we're nearly at time now, uh, Stuart says, um, have you created a side hustle with merch or prints? Um, that is, I feel like everyone's like planning what I want my life to be. <laughs> <laughs> this is what we do. Yeah. Every, we're all, you're hovering art directors on this, um, on this course. <laughs> yeah. Thank you to everyone. You've been so helpful. <laughs> so far, I've learned that I should be doing Adobe Aero and um, <laughs> yeah. So yeah, prints are definitely something that I want to do. And um, I think kind of incorporating that with Aero and having like, I love the idea of someone buying a print and they can view it in 3D as well. Um, so yeah, that is next on the agenda, definitely. Brilliant. I think we we all share the same love for your work and all of us like, this would be good with Aero. This would be good in a print. This would be good. Like we love what you do. So um it's been great taking us through you know your, your process today and just us learning a little bit more about how you create these amazing creative pieces um Stuart says rightly you know that we're taking you to the next level love. <laughs> <laughs> thank you <laughs> good it has been really great uh, to have you on today and just the fact that you're bringing us some you know that Christmas spirit as we get into it you know this is just great and Sandrine says a snow globes merch line yes yeah, I'm, I'm going to have to credit everyone on this stream <laughs> with special <laughs> thanks to. <laughs> oh, I love it. I absolutely love it. Brilliant. Well, um, this has been great, Harriet. Um, we sh you should definitely come back. Uh, there's so much more that we can uh, that we can do and, and get into, you know, more of your process. Um, it's been really great. So thank you so much. And um, for everybody, we're back here tomorrow, same time, same place. We're back at Behance. If you're watching on YouTube, come over to Behance because this is where you can ask your questions in the chat and, um, and interact with everybody. Tomorrow, we've got Tina Tooley and Tony Harmer, and they will be doing some blending analog and digital techniques. So um, lots more creativity coming your way tomorrow. Harriet, thanks again. This has been fabulous. Really great to meet you. Oh, thank you for having me. And thank you to everyone for watching as well. All good. See you soon, everyone. Goodbye.